and block everybody in Chicago. He's here. And what we're gonna be revealing right now is whether or not you're making your life easy or hard. And what we mean by that is really on a simple level, are you making your life easy or are you making your life hard? But we also wanna go even deeper today as far as spiritual growth, as far as emotional addictions, and even as far as, and this is getting a little bit far out, whether or not we as human beings all live in the same physical universe, but maybe we live in different parallel energetic realities. So we're gonna go very, very deep on this topic of whether or not you're making your life easier or hard. Again, like we said, from a simple level, from a spiritual level, from a emotional addiction level, even from a parallel universe level. Jeez, what a day, man. What a day this is gonna be. And uh, the goal here is really for you to come out of this with your life much, much easier and for you to have the ability and newfound knowledge to move up and 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 up. So we're gonna go really deep here, but we're gonna start with examples that anybody can get. And I think we've all had these. I mean, what are some of your big ones that you've seen over the years? Traffic, like you're driving and then like someone cuts you off or you just get stuck in traffic, you're gonna be late wherever you go and just fucking start flipping and shit, you know? Uh, late at a restaurant, where there's like a wait time at a restaurant, that's one. We've gotta wait. One recent one was I was out with a friend of mine and uh, we arrived and it's like, you gotta wait two, three minutes. We're so sorry, we're getting the table ready. And my friend would just be like flipping out, like, what the fuck? And I'm like, whoa, you don't realize where we're at? Like, it's a really, really nice restaurant. Well, well, let's, let's even go even past that, because I've seen this even like, Prime 112 in Miami oh. is the biggest example of this, where they'll make you wait like an hour or two. And look, let's be honest, you got there on time. Your time is, is valuable too. It is bullshit that you have to wait. It doesn't mean that you're wrong. It's just that it's your life. You're not gonna get that hour back where you flip out. Yeah. So it's not whether that you're wrong, but the question is, it's your life. How do you want to use it? Another one is uh, your Uber's late. You know, you're going somewhere important and the Uber's like stuck in traffic where it's like completing a trip nearby and then you try to cancel it, try to get a new one and they're all fucking far away and you start flipping out. You're like, fuck, I'm gonna be late. And as you said, it's true. It's, those things are not even your fault. Like, okay, the Uber is late. Oh, you arrive on time and they're like, oh, well, sorry, it's two, three minutes for us to clear the table. But it's, yeah, it's how are you gonna respond to that? Are you gonna make it hard? Because again, it'll ruin the dinner. Like, are you going to let those two, three minutes ruin the dinner? Um, even with the Uber, it's out of your control. Are you gonna let that ruin your entire drive somewhere? You know, or not? Choose your response. Your cell phone breaks. Like, you drop it. I think mine has a little crack. You know, you mine drop it. Too. Yeah. Little crack, a new cell phone, even you're like, fuck. Actually, no, mine. This is a great example. Yeah, there's a white line down the side of my cell phone I got for bringing it in the sauna. A white line. My and last. it doesn't look the same anymore when I look at it. Dude, my last cell phone, true story. I just got it, dropped it on the treadmill. Uh, running on treadmill, dropped, got stuck in between the, you know, the thing. The thing. And it bent the fucking phone, like, a few Did days in. you actually in. watch it bending? I pulled it out, well, it still worked, but now it's bent. And I could choose, and I could choose to be like, Oh my God, what the fuck, or flip out versus, okay, this happened, sucks. Um, but in my response, I'm just gonna still go about my day because you can make it hard or you can make it easy. Flight delayed, stuck on the runway. I'm about to go through the air in a metal tube and fly through the air. I have more privilege than a king or queen had 300 years ago. I'm doing something more incredible than any human's done in human fucking history of cavemen. But this flight is late! I know. And I might arrive late to my destination! The other ones too is like, there's turbulence. They're like, oh, we're gonna delay the snacks. <laughs> People freak the fuck out. Uh, the screen's too small. When back in the day there were no screens. It's like, damn, this fucking screen. Like, I, that was the reason why People were screaming behind me because it wasn't as big as the other airline they flew on. They were just flipping out and it literally ruined their entire flight. You know, the entire time you just sense like the frustration it just kept going back to it. God damn it, God. Oh, damn it. My view in the hotel isn't the right view. Oh, yeah. My tire popped. I've got to call AAA to get it handled. I've got to wait for some servant that I paid $12 a year for to come and change my tire. I forgot my keys. I've got to sit outside my apartment and take a break. I ate some bad food and I got a stomach ache. We paid a lot of money for that yeah. restaurant. My friend Karen talked shit on me and I look stupid. I look like a fool. I have a reputation that is carefully cultivated of a man of integrity. And I look like a fool. I look like a fool. I know. What else we got here? Uh, let me think. Um, you 
go to buy something and it's not there. Or like your favorite food's like, sorry, we're out, you know? Uh, and I'm hungry! They make I drove all the way here! How dare they? They make uh, your coffee the wrong way. It's like, how dare they? Or it's not hot enough, not warm enough. I know someone who puts a lot of ice sometimes, but it has to be the right amount. And if it's too cold, they're like, God damn it! And if it's too hot, God damn it! And only rarely have I seen them being happy. It's the princess and the pea. This bed is too soft. This bed is too hard. This bed is just right. But the bigger question is, when you eventually got the just right bed, would you actually even be able to enjoy it? Or would you flip out, right? Like we're doing this video. Oh my God, those people they just went through our shot and we're here in Chicago and we didn't get the shot. Why are they going through our shot right now? That's actually a great example. And it happened to me in the past where like a little thing would happen. I'm like, God damn it. And the whole time shooting the video, I'd be smiling, but inside I'd be flipping out. We are flipping out right now, by the way. You know, I can't stop thinking about those people. people. I can't stop thinking about them. Or a seminar, I have it all you know, scheduled, like planned out, and I miss one point. And the whole rest of the seminar, I'm like, it's, it's ruined. ruined. Exactly. Jinx, by the way. Jinx. He Broke jinxed the jinx. me again. It's ruined my reputation. This is my life. This is my life. Or someone's it's late. No, someone's it. late. You're on a date. Someone's late. How dare they disrespect my time being late for this? Yeah. I mean, pretty much endless. There's an endless list of these little things. And that, and that is the beauty of life, is there's endless shit to piss you off. Endless. As Winston Churchill says, history is one damn thing after another. You probably heard the thing where people say, you should go to a poor country and see how hard it is for them. And that would give you more perspective. A lot of people recommend reading the book Man's Search for Meaning by yeah, Victor, Frankl. Victor Frankl. Do you do you know the story behind that one? Yeah, I mean, if you haven't read that book, read it. It's uh, to get a little dark here. It's probably the most you know horrific book you'll ever read. Um, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. And I've read it actually you know many times recently on a plane ride, and the whole plane ride I was just like, and it just shoves you in your fucking place. You know, it's like you have your little problems, and you just feel so stupid every time you read that book. Um, that well, it, gives, it gives perspective. Yeah, it, it shifts perspective. Like, you know, my little first world problems. No matter how bad your problems are here, read that book. It'll shove you in your place. You're just like, whoa. This is like a really big thing that I've, I've really, um, I can't say I like that this has happened, but I feel like I've grown from this. Okay, so let's say for example, let's use, let's go back to the Julian Blanc media scandal. So if you ever want to read about this, Google me, Owen Cook, or Google Julian, Julian Blanc, Google us, research us, and look at all the different media articles that you're going to see. Now, I remember back in the day, um, there was the book The Game, and you can read a book called The Game by Neil Strauss. And in this book, Neil kind of had his portrayal of me, and I remember being in my mid-twenties and being like, Oh my God, my reputation, it's ruined. Or even reading like little comments online, say somebody took a live program and they didn't like it and then they were trashing it. Or somebody like didn't like one of my articles online and they're trashing it. Or people didn't like a video and they left a negative comment. And you feel that loss of approval and you kind of want to manage it somehow. Like Kevin Durant recently was apparently screwing around on Twitter. And my understanding was he was making fake accounts to respond to kind of fix his his, um, his reputation on Twitter because he's kind of, he felt kind of back because he went to the Golden State Warriors and then some people kind of tooled him for it and then he kind of felt bad about it. I'm not clear on the story. I probably shouldn't spread false gossip until I've researched it all. Yeah, yeah. If we didn't quite get it, we'll put a little comment at the bottom about what really happened. But the basic idea being is that when you feel like you're losing approval, it seems like a big deal and you get a cortisol spike from it. You get a spike of negative emotions. But funny enough, what I loved about the Julian Blanc fiasco was you'd see like the one negative article come out and then be like, our reputation. But then another one came and then another one came. And then another one came, and another one came, and another one came. And then we were eventually contacted by almost every major news media outlet in the world who crapped all over our life's fucking work, misquoting it, and basically just like cutting it out of context. To make, instead of talking about the people who we spend all night coaching and crying with and helping and the marriages that we created and all this stuff that we did to change the world, it's just like, look at this quote out of context. I mean, probably a lot of stuff we could do better or do differently, and that's why we want to learn from it. We're not even downplaying like that. Like we're open to criticism. We love criticism, and we did learn from that and change things like what we do. But the point is, just from our perspective, going through that process of at first one article, then another, then another, and then it being so many yeah. that you realize your concern about your reputation was fucking bullshit. It was fucking nonsense. And it's almost like 
say that like you're going bald, right? Like I'm going bald. But then you realize you could have cancer. Then you realize you could be getting chemotherapy. Then you realize you could be getting amputated limbs. Then you realize that your loved ones could die. Then you realize that you could die in a car accident. Then you realize that entire countries of people, not whole countries, but like in Thailand, a wave, a tsunami could kill, I think around a quarter million people. And you could have your, all your friends wiped out. And all of a sudden you realize that you live in this small little reality, fucking petty. Petty to the short, brief experience of life that you have and not realizing how much worse things could get and how when you're sitting there being a fucking crybaby to somebody who's seen more extreme fucking craziness, you look like a fucking clown. And a lot of the time I'll see girls, for example, that can't get in a club and I'm like, and they're crying and I, I literally walk up and I'm like, I'm jealous of you. Your life must be fucking amazing that you're crying over this. You, you must live an incredibly beautiful life. Some that I've seen over the years, like freaking out, like the most horrific screams as if like the worst case scenario of the world happened. Like if everything just ended, it's like, <laughs> like it was, I'm just like, whoa. And like trying to hit the bouncer, like physically trying to attack the bouncer for disrespecting them. It's like, my dress, I always get it. And their friends trying to hold them back. And I was like, whoa. You know, you know an ex-girlfriend of mine, we were going to a very special event in Miami and it was a very upscale event and she realized that the dress that a sponsor because girls who do modeling sometimes they get sponsored dresses a dress was supposed to get mailed in yeah. and what happened was she couldn't get the dress mailed properly and she had to wear admittedly it was a pretty clownish dress for a party of that level you were at that party by the way the one in miami in the in the uh, oh. star island and funny enough she was just flipping out about it and weirdly even though she flipped out i kind of relate to it i know how that feels you know, you kind of plan things in one way and then somebody kind of screws you over and it doesn't happen. You start to flip out. Like, I felt empathy for her, but her body is so fucking fine that even in her crappy little joke dress, she still was fucking stunting in the faces of every other girl there for the most part. And um, it looked amazing and had a great night. And what's funny too is like, I mean, take even like the media fiasco. Like, we're sitting here out in Chicago and it, funny enough, we only ever really talk about this for video as a good example, because a very evocative example. But we don't think about it, life moves on. When my ex-girlfriend got to that party, she just went there, she started mingling, life moves on. And what you realize in that moment when life moves on and everything's okay and everything's fun is that you may, you took all this pain over fucking nothing, over nothing. And you experience all this negativity and heaviness. You made your life so fucking hard over something that would pass. And the best, the best thing that helped me with this, it helped me tremendously, it was T.I., the rapper. And he was about to go to jail, maybe for even 15 years, because he got caught with guns. Now his friend was murdered in front of him. This is what gets lost in the sauce um, in this whole T.I. thing, because he was kind of dumb to have all, that, all those weapons on him, and kind of stupid. But his friend was gunned down, one of his best friends right in front of him. So he had this like fucking armory of guns. He got caught with it. And he, I think he was already on probation or had previous offenses or convictions. So T.I., the rapper, was looking at serious jail time. Now eventually, I think he was, he was sentenced to maybe like a year or two. It wasn't too bad, actually. But what wound up happening was an interviewer said to him, are you stressed out about going to jail? And T.I., he looked at the interviewer right in the face and he said, you know what? I'm going to spend a year in jail and he's scheduled to go to jail in about a year because like his sentence was, was going to be starting in about a year. But I don't want to serve two years in jail. I just want to serve one because, and that's paraphrase, but if I serve, if I'm stressed about it leading up to the year, yeah. it's as if I served two years in jail. So if you're going to stress over something, you've got to realize you're adding to the pain. So for example, when I was coming here to Chicago, I came last minute. It was like a last minute choice. We just decided we we're going to come. And I remember three different Ubers canceled and it was about 25 minutes. And what wound up happening was then I hit traffic and I realized I might miss my flight. I might not get to make it to the event last night. But I realized in that moment, I'm going to suffer from this either way if I miss the event. I don't want to suffer more than I have to. Maybe I'm going to make it to the flight. Why even freak out? If you don't know for sure that you're going to miss that flight. So why freak out if you don't even know that that flight's fucked? And guess what? I made the fucking flight. 
So I would have suffered over literally nothing. Imagine right now if you had a health diagnosis, like a cancer diagnosis, but really it was a false diagnosis. You could stress about it so much, you could give yourself something like cancer. You know that's extreme, but you know my point. If you stress about it too much. So you've got to realize that oftentimes you're making life harder than it has to be. And I want you to really go right now and catalog in your mind everything that's gone wrong in your life, and yet here you sit staring at your phone or your device, or this is the future in some weird 3D reality that you're watching of Tyler and Julian Blanc, and realize that all this bullshit that you've had in your life, you're still sitting here now watching the fucking video. Did it really matter? I think the answer is no. This is back in the day. I was getting to the airport and I was late, and the whole time I was like, God damn it, God damn it, God damn it, like flipping out to the point where I was like, God damn it. like stressing out in the back of this taxi. And literally we start driving, it's like we're stuck. And it's been like that for 20 minutes and we finally get to where it ends and there was an accident. And it was like seven cars. <laughs> I kid you not, seven cars that yes. hit each other. Um, I don't I didn't see anyone hurt, but like there were like some ambulances and it just like made me shut up I'm like that could literally be me. Here I am bitching. I'm like, God damn it, it's like holy fuck. You know? And it's true, like we think that stressing out about something will jump, fix it. Jump! Jump, <laughs> jump! <laughs> um, we literally think like it'll fix it if we just stress out. But in reality, as you said, or you know, as Ti, as the famous Ti once said, um, you know, whether you stress out or not, it doesn't change anything. And say it doesn't happen, like you make it on time. Stressing out is a waste of time. And if you miss it, guess what? You know, stress out then if you like, but stressing will help either. So it's lose lose. There's nothing you can do. And it's through reflecting back on your life. There are so many instances where I thought it's over. Like we literally overblow it. Like it's over. Fuck it. Um, or situations where we think there's no way out. We're just flipping out. Like in the end, here we all are. That was also something a friend of mine reminded me during the scandal because I was flipping out, and uh, he told me he's like, think of the previous times you started flipping out or you thought it was over and how two, three years later, here you are. Imagine that right now, if you're going through a lot of adversity watching this, imagine two, three years in the future, I told you, hey, it'll be okay. You had a guaranteed signed contract from the universe from God saying it'll be okay. Your experience going through it would be much easier. In any situation, you can become a victim or you can move up, okay? You can get bitter or you can get better. And it's all in the interpretation. And I think the major key here, and this is what I've wanted to communicate to girlfriends of mine so many times. So if you're an ex-girlfriend of mine, and I love you, this was an issue that we had. I'm gonna share it with you here for video. Even though I told you in person you never listen to me, maybe you'll listen now that you don't get to see me anymore. Because I love you. Anytime that there is a problem, you can take it as you being a fucking victim, or you can take it as a chance to build emotional fitness. Now let's say that word emotional fitness close into the camera. Emotional fitness. Let's say it again. Emotional fitness. One more time. Emotional fitness. And the reason why we repeat that is because anytime something happens, it's your chance to use it to build your emotional fitness muscle. Look, you you walk to the gym. You walk to the gym to lift weights to be exposed to resistance, right? Well, emotionally, when you're getting hit, that's your chance. That's the emotional gym. Your emotional fitness gym is being presented to you right here. Life doesn't give you what you want. It gives you what you need, and it's giving you a chance to grow. And this is why little kids like five-year-olds cry and cry and complain. But adults learn how to take it. Like, I remember when I was a kid, and I would even eat something that tastes bad, and I'd see my parents eating it. Like say vegetables, I hated vegetables when I was a kid. Did you hate vegetables or no? I did, okay, because I got exposed to processed foods. So then when I got real food, I was like, this doesn't taste good, like Orange Crush. We ate real food. No, lucky you, that's why you're tall. <laughs> <laughs> so, before I became a little processed food grown dwarf, I would eat processed foods, and then what would happen was, um, whenever I get real food, I didn't like the taste of it. I'd always wonder how my parents could handle it. And so my parents would say to me, well, Owen, as an adult, your taste, your taste buds are more dull than when you're a kid. They'd say to me, as a kid, your taste buds are more strong. So if you eat like a Brussels sprout, it hits you harder as a kid. When you're an adult, it wouldn't taste like that. I think that may be true from drinking tea and coffee and da-da-da, kind of dulls the taste buds a bit. But 
I suspect that actually the reason why adults can eat food that tastes bad is they're just like, fuck it. They have, it's like when they feel that pain on their tongue or the, or not the pain, but the distaste, they're just like, this will pass. This too shall pass. And so what I've now experienced is like, I'll drink turmeric shots or ginger shots or go to cryotherapy or whatever else it is. And it doesn't feel good, but because I know it will pass, it's actually an opportunity to build a presence. Present moment awareness is built during discomfort. A great book to read too that goes hand in hand with this is Anti-Fragile by Nassim Taleb, who talks about it a lot, how we need stressors. And it's true where, I mean, something that I fortunately noticed early on, and you can see it with going through our video. You can see it in almost anyone who's moved up in terms of success. Every time shit hits the fan, instead of being a victim where you feel sorry for yourself, they chose to use that as an opportunity to step it up. Or, for example, like success with women, guys would go up and say hi to a girl and it's like, nice to meet you. They got rejected and they'd be sorry and upset the entire night. You can do that or instead you could be like, Use that as motivation, perhaps, that fire under your ass to step it up even more. Another thing to realize, too, with all those little moments you freak out, it's question if you really think you know what's best for you. So that's huge. Like, what is a life crisis? What are those moments where you freak out? It's when things don't go according to your plan. You think you should be there at this time. You think this should happen and eating at that restaurant time is beneficial for you or having a phone that doesn't have a crack is beneficial for you. But is it really? Because most of the time, after the fact, like you hate it during, but after the fact, you're thankful for a lot of those moments, you know? And remember, you might not know everything. Maybe life is presenting you with an opportunity, a lesson, something you need, but you don't realize it yet. So when those moments happen, look for the lesson, look for the opportunity, look for the message, and choose to go up to get better, not bitter. Yeah, and actually, funny enough, in spiritual growth, now, I want to be clear that we can't prove this. So, Juliet and I kind of have this thing where we love the scientific side. I love reading about modern psychology. I love reading about neurochemistry or biology, science, things that are tested. But I also love reading the spiritual books, the kind of woo-woo books. I like to read it all, to be honest with you. So, to me, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one of these people that just bought into anything I read. I love different perspectives. So one of the perspectives that they have in Eastern spiritual growth, or even a lot of like the New Age movement, which I don't identify with, Julian doesn't identify with, but we love it, because it's just kind of cool. You kind of just sort of take some things from it, even if it, even if it kind of rubs you the wrong way and the people in it don't sync up with you, you can still get a lot of value out of it, and I really enjoy that. So what they will say is, we actually are reincarnated. And before we're incarnated into this earth, we choose our problems. And we forget that we're souls. We come to the earth with all these problems that we pre-planned and chose. And I mean, this is kind of weird, but they'll even say that we come with a soul family. And so our soul family actually comes to the earth, pre-plans, even people that we're enemies with, funny enough. And our soul family comes and plays these roles so that we can learn. That's why sometimes, if you ever see me have a dispute with somebody, and then I never speak bad of them, it's as fucked up as this is, in my mind, I'm like, that's probably a guy from my soul family that's here to teach me something. So I'm like, I'm not gonna be mad at him. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> okay, how <laughs> crazy the dumb shit in my mind is. But that's the frame that I try to take, is that we, we were incarnated on this earth with all the problems pre-planned, and every time that the problem happens, that's a chance to move up. Now, what's funny about that frame, here's what's interesting about it, whether you believe that, like the soul family, or whether you're more of a scientifically minded person, or you like a modern day psychology, simply ask yourself a question. What outcomes would it have to believe some nonsense like the soul family? Well, not nonsense really this whole family, but you see the idea of that. Well, what would happen is, whenever something bad happens, you would have a empowering belief system where you feel like you planned this, and then you'd be like, oh, this is cool. What's the lesson here? I'm excited. And there's not a moment wasted. I'm getting another lesson right now. I don't get to fall in my comfort zone, because usually people fall in their comfort zone, it kind of sucks. So whether you believe the soul family argument or that you incarnated here with this all planned, don't worry about that, but maybe just try it as an experiment and see how it affects you. And what you might find is it affects you so well by being, you know, in a year from now, you start to believe it, even though it's nonsense, but you start believing it just because 
it's so helpful. I just I, that was something that I found. Yeah. Maybe you know, for other people, I think that other other things kind of sync up with them, and that's just too out there. But. I'll use everything. Like, I view that as a tool. Like, I choose to believe that at times. I also question if, again, I know it's bad or not. Like, say you really want a promotion and you don't get the promotion, you might think, like, fuck, this is horrible. But is it? Maybe in the long run, it helped you. And if you got the promotion, something would happen where you're not very happy. Or, like, a relationship you wanted to go well and say you break up and now you're with someone else, you're like, oh, thank God, that ended. You don't know if it's good or not. You know? that, that, the breakup one, I think, is the most... The most visible and obvious of almost any of them because every breakup I've had I've been just crushed if it was a girl I was really tight with and yet every single time it always turns out her greatest gift to me was to let that die and that is so so strange that it works out that way and I, I don't even know if it's just a trick of the mind and it just feels that way but I've never gone backwards I've never had my next girlfriend and been like no, I really want back that previous girlfriend. I'm always just incredibly happy and grateful that she allowed that to end. Strangely, right? Yeah. But it's very powerful to go through that experience. And that's why the first breakup's always hard for people, because they're like, will I ever get this again? But when it happens, say, a few times, then you have that trust where it's like, the universe has my back. It'll all be fine. I'll still be here two, three years from now watching a video with my new girlfriend, and yeah, it'll be beneficial. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Comment in the comments, if you're watching this a year from now, with your new girlfriend and you were crushed at the time. And by the way, my theory on this is, and I'm sure you'd agree, this is that the universe has your back if you strive to understand universal principles yeah. and to surrender to those principles. So every moment that you have a challenge is an opportunity to say, what is the universe asking from me? And can I use this as a chance to surrender to that? Because when you want the physical, you crave the physical to look how you want it to look, you're now moving down. Yeah. But when you say, okay, you know what? I'm going to go into presence now, I'm gonna move up, and I'm going to move with the world. So for example, in the study of say success with women for some of our clients over the years, they had to make a decision, do I wanna cry about this girl who I've lost, or do I wanna actually say, I'm gonna move into abundance. One of the great universal principles is abundance. The belief that there's many opportunities or people in the world. And when you move with life, and you flow with life, then the universe has your back. Now, when you resist the universe, See, because the universe is kind of moving you along the stream. And if you start fighting against that, you're gonna start getting beaten until you surrender to what the universe wants. But the universe is essentially this moving wind. And if you put the sail up, the universe will push along your sail in the direction you need to go, even if you don't believe it. But what'll happen is, if you're like, no, I gotta go back that way. Yeah. When you turn around, it's like, boom, boom, boom. And you're like, oh. Or get fixated on that little thing that happened, you're no longer going with the flow. Someone walks around the video, God damn it, that person, that person. Life already moved on. The universe moved on. Stop hanging on, stop being stuck. Let go and go with it. And uh, this is what we talked about in our last video too, where, yeah, it's easy to say, you know, the universe has your back, but it requires opening up to that. And it's easier to kind of stay in your comfort zone of just fixating on shit versus, okay, abundance. It's all good. Because it's just too much to take in. The best example I've ever experienced like this was when we made that breakup video several years ago, and I was just crushed during a breakup. It was weird, but every time that that girl, she'd be breaking up with me, and it was funny because during the relationship, she would chase me around like a little puppy, but then when she decided she was done with me, the, the power dynamic switch, and I was like, no! Like, classic case, right? A lot of guys have had this, where you don't appreciate it really enough, and then she breaks up with you, and then you chase her back, and it's kind of weird. That happened to me, it's kind of embarrassing, but that's what happened. So, I'm chasing her back, and as I'm chasing her back, I can feel it, this is done. The universe wants this to end. I meant to move on, I meant to have new challenges, I meant to grow, this is done. And when I would just let it go, I would start to heal. But then I would keep trying to go back, and every time I'd go back, she, maybe we'd have sex again, or you know, it would start to be good again, but it was never quite what it once was, and she'd kind of flip out and stuff. And what would happen is, I'd realize that I'm fighting against what I'm supposed to do. And when I finally just let go, and I accept it, she's gone, which by the way, I mean, you know how close I was to her, right? That was the closest relationship of my life at that point. To lose her was a loss of identity. It was, it was a, an incredibly difficult transition. And I could never imagine my life without her. I couldn't imagine that we could be sitting here on this boat enjoying life without her. I never imagined that I could be whole again. And the truth is when we split, I wasn't whole. There was half of my soul was ripped out of my fucking guts and it was incredibly painful. But now as I've moved on, I'm whole again and life does move forward. And what's weird is I would never trade one minute that I had with that girl for the world, but I also wouldn't trade one minute I've had since we broke up 
and I would never go back and keep replaying the life that her and I had when I look at the adventures that have happened since that point. But it hurts because when you love somebody and half your guts are ripped out, you never imagined that it could be the same. When we lost reputation, going from being the media darlings, we're like Hitch, to being like Darth Vader. When we lost relationships in the past, even people who were good friends with, who didn't want to be friends with us anymore, has happened, right? Like, you know, you might've seen that play out in the public. And when that happens, when you have that transition, it's painful, it fucking sucks. I mean, even take it like, I mean, you know, even like, you know, friends of ours, right? Who we, you know, who we hang out with and who are part of our crew and then they're not around anymore and it's kind of scary and it hurts to, to lose them when they don't want to be part of it. But then all of a sudden, new people come, right? You know, Maze, the guy filming this right now, is actually, you know, hanging out with us. And what's weird is, as much as I miss some of our old crew every day, now we have Maze and he can film for us. <laughs> we have our new pet. Oh, oh, shit. So the point being that new people do come, right? And it can even be people who are more suited to your current mode of life. You can, it, and it's weird, and we're gonna get into this with the whole parallel realities concept or jumping into different realities. We're gonna get into this, but the idea being that when one reality has kind of run its course, you are, you are shuttled into that next reality. You're almost like the movie uh, or the show Quantum Leap. If you ever saw that in the 80s, which you probably didn't, but the show Quantum Leap, this guy, he would go get a lesson and then when that lesson or mission was completed, he would be quantum leaped into some other person's body and have to play that out. And a lot of the time, life is like that. Like, like at the time of, say, the Julian Blanc fiasco, we had played out that reality of being the media darlings. We played out that reality of just like doing whatever the fuck we want, having life easy, because the business was just growing and growing and crowds getting bigger, like on top of the world. Played out that reality. And what's weird is the, the lessons that we could have got in that reality, we got them. And then now we get new lessons in the new reality. I mean, if we actually created this script from outer space before we came down to Earth, that's hell. Awesome. Good, good job, bro. <laughs> we did it. Good job, Julian. So, <laughs> I, know. I think it was good. Who knows? Rationalization. Human beings, you got to be a master of rationalization sometimes. So it's like you can choose your perspective. You can mm -hmm. choose. Yeah, you gotta be. Yeah, you gotta be a good rationalizer. Okay, so we're giving you our our loads of bullshit here that we use to get through the day. Okay, really, we cry ourselves to sleep, and then we come out here and we make these videos. We're like, we planned it from our soul family, and then it was all part of the plan. When you do think of weird explanations like the soul family and how absurd that is, it is not any more absurd than just being this pointless carbon-based life form. So any theory is absurd. I mean, when you look at the world and you see. You know, say you go on YouTube or any video site and you look at map of the galaxy and you see that we're on this little dot in this giant galaxy. We don't understand why we're here. We don't know why aliens haven't come to visit us yet when statistically speaking they should have by now. It doesn't make sense. So we don't understand why we're alive. And I like to get you thinking about weird things like that to open up your mind a little bit here and make you realize that there may be things happening that are beyond your understanding. And they're certainly beyond my understanding. But when you start looking a little bit deeper and you do start looking for patterns and things like that, you're gonna see things in a different way that you would never, ever expect. And one of those ways is that you begin to realize that you're not as much in conscious control of your mind as you think. So we're gonna look at this from a scientific perspective, but also from a energetic or spiritual perspective. And that way you'll kind of have both arguments. Cause like we said, we're kind of open-minded to any explanation. So the first one that we want to cover is emotional addictions or your emotional set point. We've covered this in other videos. So we're gonna gloss over it here. And then we're also gonna go deeper into the more weird explanations. The question you should ask yourself here is what emotions, like what sensations do you experience the most on a day-to-day -day basis? And it's crazy to do this audit. Like we don't want to do it. I always compare it to checking your bank account. Like say you go out and spend a little too much, do you really want to log in and see? You're like, no, but ask yourself here, day to day, what are the emotions you experience the most? And you can be shocked here, but you'll notice it's the same fucking thing every single day. There's that same 90% of your thoughts even today were your thoughts yesterday. The same concerns, the same ups and downs, uh, if you freak out over like your Uber being late, it probably happens 90% of the time your Uber arrives. Um, it, it, we're creatures of fucking habit. 
and ask yourself what you experience the most. And a lot of people, it's anger, anxiety, stress, fear, just like what emotions are you addicted to and what emotions do you secretly love? Because you might think like, what, I don't like that. But do you experience it a lot? Do you? And if that's the case, you love it. Part of you loves it and you will always find a way back to that. No matter how good shit gets, find a way back to being stressed. If you're someone who's stressed, you could be, you know, say hypothetically I'm stressed all the time. I'd be here and I'd be like stressing out. Like, oh, fuck, do we, is, is it too loud? Do we have time to shoot? Did we get the shot? If you're someone who's mad, you could be like, God damn it, the people walked in front. If you're someone who's afraid, oh man, are we going to fucking sink? Oh shit. You know, what do you experience the most? And you can see how that just colors your life. And it doesn't matter what changes externally, you'll find a way back to it. Why do these guys keep talking about emotional addictions? Why do these guys keep talking about emotional set point? And people, by the way, who are often in a low or negative state get really angry by this emotional set point argument. And the reason why is because you're basically saying the things that you're pissed off about are illegitimate. Your anger, your stress, your frustration is just you feeding an emotional addiction. And in a way, and I understand this, it can a little bit come across, like say that somebody I'm friends with, like I'm downplaying my fuck up. Like let's say that I was late for you, and then I'm like, and then you're annoyed by it, right? You're like letting me know, like, dude, you shouldn't be late. And I'm like, are you just addicted to being mad, Julian? This isn't my fault. It's your fault for your emotional addiction, Julian. And it, it, it can come across as condescending or disavowing responsibility for your mistakes. So I want to be clear here that when you understand that this is part of human nature, that doesn't let you off the hook for fucking up. And it doesn't mean that anybody that's annoyed at you is wrong and they're just emotionally addicted to negativity. It doesn't mean that. What it does mean though is that there's two parallel things happening. One thing that's happening is you're fucking up. And in your reality, you should work to stop fucking up and improve that. But the other thing that is happening, let's be honest, is most likely if that person is freaking out, even though they're right that you should do better, they're probably addicted to negative emotions. I've had it to where I'm dating a girl and I fuck up and she freaks out. And I say, I say, I say, baby, I love you. There's two things happening here. One is I'm fucking up and I'm owning that. I fucked up. Maybe I love you. I fucked up and I'm going to work on it by doing this, 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 and this. I'm going to own this. I own it and I'm sorry. But we also have to talk about the fact that when you flip out this hard, there is something else going on. And that's not me taking away from the fact of what I did wrong, but there is this other thing kind of going on on your end to where, let's be honest, even if I didn't do this, even if I didn't fuck up, you probably would be mad at the airport clerk. You probably would be mad at the waiter. You probably would be mad about the flat tire. You'd be mad about something. When you have an emotional addiction, your body is seeking to get what's called emotional homeostasis. Your body is trying to keep in the same range of emotions because back when you're a caveman or cavewoman, your body was built to be in a very similar environment every day. You'd go pick your berries, you'd go hunt, you'd make your fire, you'd have sex. And you do this again and again and again. So our bodies are built to go into a homeostasis of emotions that work for us. So maybe if we were in an environment where being mad was helpful, somehow it helped, our bodies would learn to get mad all the time. Our bodies would learn that to keep homeostasis, get mad. Understand that this vestige of evolution is actually fucking up your life right now. And you, whenever you're getting mad, you're pro if you get mad about a half an hour a day, again, as Julian said, do the audit, probably every day you get mad about a half an hour a day. If you're somebody who gets mad two minutes a day, probably you get mad two minutes a day. If you're somebody who's happy and laughs about 30 minutes interspersed throughout the day, you'll find some way to get it. And so when you see someone who's addicted to anger, you're gonna see them kind of sitting there almost like a ticking time bomb waiting to go off. And then as soon as that thing happens that they were waiting for, boom, they go in the addiction. And if you learn to observe this, you'll see it in other people. But by the way, that's the easy part. The hard part is seeing it in yourself. And you've got to ask your friends for feedback. Something that helped me is what turns me on? When are you turned on throughout the day? Not sexually, but when do you come alive? And you'll see it when like- When you come alive. And when do you come alive? Uh, you'll see it in the eyes. Like we could be talking about a friend that's doing well. You know, yeah, his friend's doing well. And say with someone who's hooked on bitching or gossiping, they'll be like, that's nice. But then I could talk about John, where I'm like, did you hear what happened to John? 
and you'll fucking light up. Do you light up when you hear you gossip? Engage. You're like, what, 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 John? Let's keep talking about how John fucked up. Let's hear about this thing about John. Oh, I can't believe that. Oh, and the government did that? Oh, and like, what, when you come alive, you know? And it's crazy how, I mean, just look at how mainstream media is designed. Most people come alive when it's like, oh, unfairness, blame, outrage versus here's some good news. This is where this is gonna get even weirder because what we're gonna suggest is that even the people who you choose to be around are people who actually feed whatever emotions that you're addicted to. I've seen this a lot of girls where I say, describe to me your last five boyfriends. And if they're like, he cheated on me, and the other one cheated on me, and the other one yelled at me, I realize that if I'm really nice, and if I don't cheat, there's actually a chance that that girl will leave me for a guy who does, because that guy is feeding that reality. Yeah. And I've seen this even with like, say, guy and guy business partners, where they're always bickering and fighting, and they'll always complain about each other, but if they were actually to partner with somebody who wouldn't engage in that energy, they wouldn't have a sense of identity anymore, and they wouldn't be able to continue. I've even had it where I've seen disputes with people where they're, they've been fighting and fighting for years, and you make it to where there's no reason to fight anymore. It's done, we fixed it, it's done, it's over. We figured out the solution. But what happens is that I'll see, like say those two people, they will find a way to do something so crazy to keep that fight going, and the whole world is like, what are these guys doing? This is crazy. Yeah. But what winds up happening is that they, if you were to solve it, they would no longer have a sense of identity. And by the way, I would even say to you, if your last girlfriends have been chaotic, where's your addiction? When I look at some of my exes who've had issues, I don't just look at them. I look at myself and I say, why am I getting involved with girls that are doing that? And I've had some incredible exes that were way above my level in the salt of the earth, so maybe that maybe there's hope for me or you know, whatever. But you see the general idea? You've gotta to start to ask yourself, why is it that you're getting involved with that? I've also seen it, by the way, to where I might be involved with somebody, with a friend or ex, and I can see that like, as I was growing, back when we first met, I was more in that chaotic reality, and then as I grow, and I'm coming more into peace and joy and abundance, they're not kind of on that same track, and they're sort of living in that old parallel reality, and I try to pull them up to it, but eventually it has to unshackle, because, we, you don't attract what you want, you attract what you are. High vibration energy attracts more high vibration energy, low vibration energy attracts more low vibration energy. So you yourself, if you have friends or business people you work with or partners or girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it is, and you move up, they may not be getting that need from you anymore and it has to unshackle. It's like two asteroids kind of going, eventually they're gonna split, right? And it's kind of hard when that happens and that's one of the painful parts of personal development, but there is that emotional addiction component and also that reality that is within the person's head and that they will construct in their external life. Like if you're somebody who has a messy room, but yet there's also some really expensive things in your room, and yet there's also some stupid things in your room, that could signal that you're a little bit messy in your mind. There's also some amazing things in your mind, and also there's some fucked up things in your mind. And I realize that's a very vague, cold read, because I think almost anybody's like that. But you see the general idea behind it, and you can actually look at your entire life, and if you look at your life, it's often a mirror of what's going on in your head. So say that we look at like that soul family argument, which is a very weird, esoteric, and maybe utter nonsense, bullshit, fucking argument. It's my or family could, yeah. out there, it's <laughs> my soul family. Or it could be true. Well, let's say that a person was incarnated, if you were to believe that, into a negative environment. And you actually try to help that person. What you'll generally find is that the more that you try to help that person, they say they want it, but later they fucking hate you. And the reason that I believe could be the case, if you even believe in that, which I don't know, I mean, again, we're just in this fucking galaxy, we don't know why we're here, so I'm just like, read books, and like, maybe that could be an explanation, I don't fucking know, because some of the shit that we see is so fucking weird that we're like, literally devolving to explanations like a soul family to try to make sense of some of the crazy shit that we're seeing. So, when I see that, my theory is that maybe that person's soul needs to move down, and you're interrupting their process. It's like, part of, like their, their life's plan, their soul's plan was to move down, and you're like, no, 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 we're gonna go travel and make money and laugh. And they're like, I didn't come here for that. Why are you fucking up my shit? Like, it's like you go into a horror movie and you wanted to experience it, and then it's like romantic comedy. You know, and you're like, I want the horror movie. You know? uh, but I do wanna say here, don't use this as an excuse not to help people either. Like you're walking by, say there's someone in pain, you're like, they have to experience that. Yeah. Da -da -da. I don't wanna interrupt that. Someone getting mugged, I don't wanna interrupt that. 
So because because maybe they came here to actually to receive help, and you could have given it to them. But then if you keep trying to give help and they clearly don't want it, then that's when you unshackle. Now we mentioned that we're going to go into even some weirder concepts here. So we're going to go into an even weirder idea, and we mentioned this in the video that we shot in Denver. But we're going to dive into it a little bit deeper, which is this idea that. We want you to imagine yourself like this balloon that's trying to move up. And it's in the balloon's nature to move up, but there's these chains that are holding it down. And the word that we're gonna use for now, but we're gonna kinda use this word provisionally, but I think we could have a better word, but let's just use it for now, is those chains are like karmic threads that are holding you down from elevating. Now, the idea that we talked about in the Denver video was this idea that the world is so amazing. There's so much to be grateful for in the world. And what we do is as a way of shutting out how incredible the world is, it's almost like sunglasses for the glare of the awesomeness of the fucking world, is that we focus on all this petty fucking bullshit and ignore the bigger picture. So, you know, I've had it where say, I'm dating a girl and I'm bringing to the table world travel, living in beautiful places, going to incredible food restaurants, buying the best clothes, doing this, having fun, meeting great people. But I've seen it where the girl, all that she can focus on is like, I didn't call her one time or something like that. And she can't come off it. And the reason why I think I've seen a lot of this is because what I see happening is that the world has gotten too good and it's almost like it's too bright. And to wear sunglasses to shut off the glare of the fucking awesomeness, it's like, you didn't call me that one time. Oh my God. And sometimes I feel like when that girl will see that, it's like, look, to keep this shit moving forward of all this awesomeness, we gotta be focused. We can't be getting mad about like, like if I got mad about every little small thing like that, the business would fall apart because we have issues like that every day, yeah. right? And you, you become who you hang out with. So if I became like that, that every single time there was a problem with like merchant processing or some missed sales thing or some website that goes down or some video that got fucked up or you know we had our um one of my mics ran out of batteries so now we have to share the mic like we got to share the mic now oh my god well there, when you run a business there's so many problems that are going to happen or if you try to be successful in any endeavor there's so many problems that are going to happen that if you don't have that emotional fitness to deal with that your life is going to be freaking miserable. So you have to have emotional fitness before you can even take your life to another level because more money, more problems. As you move up, more crazy things are going to happen. Now, understand that these karmic threads are essentially distractions from how amazing life is. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about places you could travel to. Imagine you travel to Africa or to Hawaii or to any environment where things are just so, so beautiful. I want you to really think about that. Imagine just looking at your hands right now and just a little print in your hand. Look at the person next to you. Look into their eyes. Take a deep breath of fresh air. Get present for a moment. Look at your computer screen. Look at your phone. Look at the technology. Think of how amazing life is. Why can't you just let that in and freaking be happy? Why can't you? And my opinion is that what it is is that your soul isn't ready to move up yet. Now, what would happen if you kind of just let that go? and you became super present. And instead of focusing on a million things that are bothering you, you chose to focus only on the most incredible things in the world. Let's say that you focus just on gratitude. Let's say that you were to focus on things that are teaching you, things that you're learning, the fact that your emotional fitness that you're building is amazing if you focus on joy, experiencing the moment. Like how often do you go to a great restaurant and you still sit there kind of pissed? How often do you maybe meet a great girl and she becomes your girlfriend and you thought you're gonna be so happy when you got that girlfriend, but instead you're exactly the same. Right now you probably make more money than you did a few years ago. And you probably thought that when you made that money you'd be happy, but you probably feel the same. Hopefully you do enjoy it more. But you see my point, probably a lot of it's the same, maybe some of it is better. But you see the general point here, okay? And if it doesn't fully apply, look at the parts where it partially applies. Well, what's going on here? What I would challenge you to do is for one hour, just for an hour, just to be present. Just be present to the moment. Just take in the awesomeness. Let it in. Open up that perception. Let the perception open up. And say to yourself, rather than focusing on a million things, I'm going to focus on being present to the moment. I'm going to focus on learning and what's helping me. I'm going to focus on building emotional fitness when things don't go perfectly. And anything negative that I do want to focus on, I'm just going to focus on the constructive aspects of it and move forward. And Think of how much of your mental dialogue is just on a repeat of negativity or projection or thinking of bad things that can happen or bad things that did happen. And what would happen if you just allowed your awareness to rest in the present moment? Well, the thing with being present to the moment is that it builds. And the more presence that comes into you and the more that you let go of negativity, as that builds and builds and builds, that's like the balloon moving up. 
And like we said, high vibration energy attracts more high vibration energy. Low vibration energy attracts more low vibration energy. Even if you don't believe in that terminology, you don't have to. Just look at it from a scientific perspective and emotional addictions. And think about it in terms of self-fulfilling prophecies. It's like, are you making life hard or easy? If you're sitting there and thinking of hustling all afternoon and you're in a bad mood about it, what if you're just to be in a good mood and you just took a walk? And on that walk, you're in such a good mood that you met somebody who could help you, and that person that could help you was attracted to your great energy, and all of a sudden, you worked only 5% as much to achieve 100 times the outcome. It's like snakes and ladders, right? You don't need to crawl up that painful lateral time. Sometimes you can slide down the snake, but you make your life harder than it has to be because you're stuck in a limited reality. So what I want you to ask yourself, whenever you're reacting to something, say to yourself, is this real, or could I just let this go and move up? Like if that person cut you off in traffic, is the anger real or could you just move up? It doesn't all have to be so hard. Life can be easy. And as life gets easier and easier and you become more and more positive and you let things go, it's like that balloon is moving up and it's catching the current and it's just going. And to me, that's the kind of flow that you want to get into. So to build on the soul families, you know, we got a little weird. Why not go weirder and talk about parallel realities? And uh, to really hammer this point home, think of when you go to, I mean, there's that, there's this liquor store in Hollywood on, you know, Sunset Boulevard. And every time you walk in, it's right next to this awesome club. It's like everyone's like partying, having a blast. And you walk in there and you just kind of feel like you've entered this weird pocket of energy. You know, this new, this this other dimension. You know, people like, just kind of heavy. Like you're, I always hear people complaining around that area. Um, it's just very heavy, very dark. You go up and like, you know, I'm just getting some chewing gum. And if someone's like mad, just like here, like your pain, you're like, whoa. You know, where was I? And then you walk out and it's like, oh you know, um, or you go to say, um, the sauna, you know, the spa and you walk in, it's like, oh, it's a very soothing place. You know? and, and that's a great example too, because some spas, some Russian spas or Korean spas actually are very dense Ooh, and heavy. So there's actually, so it's, and that's a great example. It's not just the environment, it's the people attract that environment. Because some of the Russian bodies you go to are like the heaviest environments you've ever seen, or the Korean spas, where some guys are like whacking off and like staring at you and shit. And I've seen that guy's like stroking it while staring at me, and I'm like, huh, interesting spa here. And then other spas you go to, it's very light and refreshing. The same with uh, spiritual circles, by the way. You'd think, oh, in the spiritual health shop, it's very light and sometimes it is but other times you hear a lot of bickering and a lot of negativity you know it just feels very heavy and to recognize this I mean you do have to get in touch with how you feel go into your body and even watching this video now what environment are you in are you in a little pocket of that negative energy or do you feel very light and just look at your entire life what reality are you in we all live in the same physical world but energetically it's a very different world. And what we tend to do is we tend to attract people that will reinforce that energetic, either high vibration or low vibration reality. And we tend to be attracted to places and jobs that will go along with that reality that we're in. So the way to think about it, if you want to go in that kind of weird spiritual version, is you say that you made a decision to be incarnated into this life and you're now seeking out people who will reinforce the lessons that you're here to get and environments that reinforce that and your entire life's drama playing out either in a very heavy way or in a way that's very light and like we said a lot of the time if you try to pull somebody out of that they're very very pissed and so the more that you help somebody to pull out of that if they're resisting it eventually they can really hate you or snap on you and start calling you an asshole and all this all this derogatory shit because you're trying to show them something better and for me that's actually what it was when like the people who I saw that were kind of living in a heavy world that I tried the hardest to really pull up seeing the blowback on that made me realize that you've got to be You've got to bring people into that reality that are ready to be there. It's like, say you take a homeless person and you bring that homeless person into a beautiful apartment and the couches are nice and the pillows are plush and the bed is comfortable and it's very temperate, it has a great view. That homeless person, they might be in the same physical reality as you, but in the same way that we talked about where somebody who's addicted to talking shit, they get enlivened with negativity, but when you joke with them, they kind of disconnect, you'll see them retract. This is what you'll notice, they, they retract during laughter, they retract during peace or positivity. That positive environment will actually disturb that person. So yeah, the, yeah, the homeless guy, some of them might really like it to be fair. They're like, wow, this is the best, thank you. But many of the other ones will actually need to go back down. Or even if they're in that beautiful environment, they need to take drugs. Like, you know, it's like, oh, I gotta do my crack now in the beautiful environment. 
or I've got to get a, get a fight in the beautiful environment. I've had it to where I've lived with people who are living in the most like epic palatial mansions that you've ever seen, but they find a way to come back to negativity and pain, even living in that beautiful environment. Yeah. And it's like wherever you go, there you are. And you might be in a better physical reality, but unless you have a higher level, higher vibration internal reality, you might think that you're moving up, but actually it might cause more chaos than you'd ever imagine. And with this too, by the way, ask yourself like around what people do you get turned on again? I love that word, turned on. You know, who are your people? And I remember back in the day, say I was around people who bitched, I'd feel like, ah, oh, this is my tribe. And then you'd put me around people who were say a little happier and it would be exhausting. It was like I was playing a certain role. And then when I'd get back to the people who bitched, oh, I could be me again. So around who are you, you? So we're on the home stretch here and we've provided a lot of very weird concepts. Concepts that are very out there and again to reinforce always look at a broad range of ideas to think about how you're processing your life So you want to be looking at the emotional addictions the science the psychology And if you're interested or you think it's interesting You can look at those spiritual aspects or even this weird stuff about parallel realities and also never just believe anything out of hand Everything that we told you about that we kind of maybe believe it's more just models that maybe could make sense or maybe could just Be utilized and whether they're true or not doesn't matter as long as it helps you to understand your life better and to improve, okay? Human beings, there's so much information and things we don't know about the world. So if you have a set of beliefs that's just helping you, kind of just play with those, use them while they're helping you, and then if they don't anymore, then just let them go, okay? So whatever resonates with you, use it. But just wrapping on this whole parallel realities idea, whether or not it's a spiritual thing, whether or not it's a, like, because some people actually believe that there's infinite different realities that we move into like when you just shift your state you can even move into a parallel reality like super weird idea could be true might not be true like maybe there's this other version of you out there that's making millions this other version that lives in a cave like all this different stuff right because i mean when you think about the concept of infinity again think about infinity maybe that could be true Maybe there could be a soul's plan, a soul family, or maybe not. Maybe it's just a cold, harsh world, and we have emotional addictions and inner psychology, and maybe that's what's running us. Who knows? Who cares? Just understand it. So let's just sort of take that, and regardless of what model you kind of resonate with or go with, let's just wrap this on the home stretch with practical examples of how you can get a sense for this, how you can see it in the world, and what you can do to change it. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get you kind of a palette or inner sensitivity about what it is that you're really feeling. And the way that I think about that is, I think about that kind of derp state that I go into when I'm sitting there watching random videos online when I'm kind of tired. And a lot of the time, I think to myself, well, maybe I should edit my own videos. And then I'll jump into, say, Adobe Premiere, which is a software that I use to edit. And I start seeing these videos that I know, if I release that video, that video is going to improve my career. It's going to improve my reality. It's gonna put my life situation on such a different level that the video itself begins to frighten me. It begins to, and I wouldn't say like, uh, like that, but it just repels me a little bit. And I'm like, no, just keep watching videos. And it's kind of funny because I even feel these chains, these karmic threads holding down the balloon from moving up myself, where I look at my life and even with RSD in low eight figures a year in revenue, in my mind, I'm like, well, why couldn't we be at 500 million or a billion? And I say to myself, to what extent am I addicted to the kind of reality that I have? Maybe, you know, I go out and meet women at night. You know, I work with this level of people who I'm working with. I do this type of work. and. It's kind of this loop that has different iterations of it week to week, when in reality, instead of just climbing the ladder, maybe I could slide down the snake. So I feel that reality. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is for you to go into your reality and just think about that day-to-day -day loop that you're sort of in. And think about the emotional fulfillment that you're getting out of it. And think about the needs and addictions that it's fulfilling. Think about how you're kind of moving through that reality and then ask yourself, when am I done? When have I had enough of that? When have I experienced enough of this that I'm willing to say, let's do the next thing. So kind of like what I said with my ex-girlfriend or having breakups, where it's like, okay, you experience that, what's the next thing? And not being in pain or flipping out as if you lost your car keys or something, when you have a life transition. So that being the case, what I want you to do is develop a sense of what you're feeling as far as your addictions, and then ask yourself how you react when something more positive is around you. How do you feel, how do you react? And what I notice is that whenever I have, say, a video that would improve my career, sometimes I'm so afraid of my own success that I have to pay somebody to make me sit down 
and actually finish the freaking thing and put it out. And then when I do, my life gets better and people are like, oh, that was awesome. Da, da, da. And then my life doesn't move up. But sometimes you got to kind of force it. So what you want to really do is you want to get an idea of what your life could look like. What would be an incredible life for you? And ask yourself, am I willing to give up the derp state or addiction of that kind of derpiness or kind of floatiness that I'm in. And what I really want you to do is, is everywhere you go in public, look at different people. Look in their pupils and look at the, the brightness in the pupils, the aliveness in the eyes. Look at the concerns that they have, the things that they're addicted to talking about, and ask yourself, are they making their lives easy or hard? How hard are you making your life and where could you make it easier by opening up and going into abundance, right? You know, if, if you're obsessed with that girl who broke up with you, could you just move into abundance, take that girl as an experience and move on? If you're a girl, could you do that for a guy? Gay or straight, doesn't matter, whatever it is. Could you allow that to happen? So what you've gotta do is you've gotta get a taste for it, ask yourself well, what reality you're in and what would it mean to move up? Why are you afraid of it? And what would it be like if you were to move up? This is years ago when we first met and I was in that, um, you know, kind of for loco. For loco debauchery phase. I was like going out drinking uh, cigarettes. cigarettes. It was just chaos. Best example of addiction, low vibration energy, alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, excessive processed foods and so on and so forth and yeah. bitching and complaining and you tell me like dude what the fuck put it down and I knew like put me down like put a gun on my head and be like tell the truth I'd be like hell yeah if I gave all this up I would move up but something kept pulling me back like part of me didn't want to give it up you know and there was that fear it's like it could get better but I'm used to this this is my reality this is the little bubble the pocket I live in or maybe you just weren't done sometimes you just got to be done yeah and usually when you're done it's like when shit gets worse and worse and worse where you're like enough's enough and that's where life or the universe will help you with that and uh, yeah it really comes down to that willingness to be aware of it too like be honest with yourself and that's why I keep saying do that audit what turns you on what people turn you on what environments do you find yourself in the most what is your version of Groundhog's Day where you just live the same day over and over and over again what are the concerns notice too when there's resistance you know a common one is reading a book I remember in the past I wouldn't read at all and it would scare me like I'd have this book and I know if I read it I'd move up and I'd start kind of reading it and I'd get very tired I'd be like Ugh. The epicness of it. Yeah. You put on the shades. The yeah. epicness of that book is like the epicness of nature and life and the beauty of life. And you need the shades to put it back on and go into those back into those petty concerns. Yeah. And then just read some shit. Or if I'm watching a video online, it's like, here's the derpy one. Here's one that would perhaps move me up. Yeah, let's go with the derpy one. You know, it's just too much. So kind of catch yourself there. What are the boundaries? Where does it start pulling you back in? And where are you right on the edge of entering another reality? Self audit. What emotions are you addicted to? If you were a spirit, which who knows? Okay, but if you were, is your spirit moving up or is it moving down? If you were in a parallel reality, what parallel reality are you in? What is the one that is difficult, one that is hard? The pain in your life, are you the one causing it? Are you the greatest architect of your own discontent? I predict you are, I think we all are. I certainly couldn't claim otherwise. Or, you know, are you really a victim? I think you're probably the greatest architect of your own discontent. And more than anything, do you have emotional fitness when different challenges come up? So here, what you've done is heard a lot of different ideas, some that you're gonna think are absurd and garbage, others that you might resonate with, whatever that is. But your job is not to get hung up on how true it is or not true it is. Your job is to simply ask yourself those hypothetical questions as a thought experiment. Most of these weirder topics that we brought up here are thought experiments more than anything because ultimately you're not going to know. Anybody who claims to know this or that, there's many questions about life that we're not in a position to know while we're alive. So that being the case, ask yourself and do that audit and make adjustments. If you do that, and you ask yourself questions like this, realize that so few people ever will ask these questions or really take conscious control over these areas. But if you do, what could your life look like? And really follow like how you feel. You know, you'll always know before going in a certain direction, like say the Uber's late. You can choose to be upset or to just go with the flow. One option is always lighter and you'll know. You know, you can complain about something and it can be very heavy or you could just let it go. That doesn't mean don't fix it, don't take action, but there's always a lighter route. Ask yourself, what is the lighter route? So what's gonna happen is you're gonna turn this video off. And right now, you get it. It's so clear. Everything makes sense. 
And that's because in this moment, your perception has been expanded. Hopefully, at least if, you know, if you're willing to let us do our fucking job, <laughs> your perception has been expanded. If you're not, then you might even be fighting and be like, that's bullshit, right? Because like, you gotta fight it off, you gotta fight it off. But if you let us do our freaking job, right? It's like, you know, you're having sex with somebody and they're trying to get you off. We're trying to get you off here. If you let us get you off, your perception is expanded. And what that means is now you get it. In this moment, you get it. You have an experience. Soon you're gonna go back to your regular life and all these things are gonna start to bear down on you and they're gonna start to frustrate you and you're gonna move into negativity, you're gonna move into frustration and you're gonna move into smallness. And that's okay because frankly, if this one video could solve that, then you wouldn't even need to be alive. If you knew everything, you wouldn't need to be alive. If you didn't need more lessons, you wouldn't need to be here. So embrace those lessons and even when you fall back, look, me and Julian have many more times that something frustrating will happen to us and we're gonna freak out and we're gonna forget our own advice even though we made this video. We're the ones that made it and we're gonna forget. So for sure you're gonna forget. But when you do forget, it's just another experience of learning what doesn't work and it's an opportunity for you to learn from it, to recalibrate, to say, wait a minute, I forgot about what I learned in that experience, right? This is like taking, you know, some crazy psychedelic drug trip, like thinking about this stuff and you're gonna forget the lessons that you had on that psychedelic drug trip. But then what you can do is you can say, wait a minute, in that moment I had an experience, I can re-remember it. I can see that by me becoming small again, it doesn't help. And then you can expand. And that's the beauty of life is that the entire journey itself is for you to experience. And we just thought that maybe we would give you a few pointers here on YouTube. I mean, look, you could be watching anything. You could be watching a sports game. You could be watching some random TV show. Or you could be watching this, okay? So we hope that you enjoyed the boat ride. It was very loud. You could probably barely hear it in certain cases, but in many ways by straining to hear it, you actually would pay closer attention. And in addition to that, what was the point of the video? Well, maybe we shot on that boat on purpose because the point of the video is not to let small, petty nonsense bother you and you can choose to take in the video or to focus on that loud tourist voice. And this was your opportunity. And this video was meant to be a metaphor of that. This video was meant to be a metaphor of the boat moving through your life. The only constant is you. As everything moves, the only constant is you. It's frustration and you can choose to focus on the annoying part like the voice in the boat or you can choose to focus on the beautiful boat ride and the information and the joy and the bigger picture itself so we hope that you took this metaphor which we now revealed to you at the end of the video to bring it back full circle thank you for taking part of this here in chicago it was a wonderful evening thank you for joining it thank you very much we appreciate it and we're done peace this is julian and welcome to transformation it was fucking amazing. This was huge for me. This was so, so important. This gave me by far the greatest epiphanies I've ever had. It just made me finally confront my deepest fears. And we got like real deep and I found some issues within myself. One of the best things I've seen so far in my life. What you're about to experience going through this program is what completely changed my life on every single level. Okay, be it health, wealth, relationships, higher purpose, you name it, this is the stuff that finally, finally produced that true, long-lasting personal transformation we're all after. Okay, now, before we dive into what you can expect when you start your transformation and how this program works, because it is a completely new approach here with new methods designed to produce results for you fast, I wanna share with you a little bit of the backstory of how Transformation Mastery came into existence. So I first got into this whole personal development, self-help world back in 2006 when I randomly found out about success with women and the fact that you can work on yourself and transform who you are into someone who is more confident, fun, attractive, playful, so on and so forth. Because up until that point, and I don't know if you know this about me, I was stuck, okay? I was completely stuck. I was at the bottom. I was someone who was anxious 24-7, who was stressed out 24 seven, miserable 24 seven, paranoid. I couldn't put myself out there. I couldn't speak up. I wouldn't jump at opportunities. I was just living a very miserable existence. I was depressed, I was overwhelmed, I was drained, I had no energy, and it was straight up hell. You know, on a scale of one to 10, if I had to rate my experience of myself, it was a good three out of 10. And it's been like that as far as I can remember. You know, ever since I was a kid, like my earliest memories, it was like that. Like that was me and I had no hope. You know, I kind of came to terms with, hey, I guess this is just how things are. And I had my excuses. Well, 
you know, I grew up in Switzerland. Maybe if I lived in America, things would be different. Maybe if I had cooler friends, maybe if I was better looking, maybe if I had, you know, I, I, this thing happened to me, if that person didn't screw me over, so on and so forth. And I just lived a hell of a life. And finding out about this whew, gave me that hope. I was like, whoa, I can actually have control over this. I don't have to stay a victim. I can step it up and change who I am. I don't have to accept this shitty reality, this shitty state of being. And I did. Okay, I became obsessed with transforming who I am. And I optimized everything. I optimized my personality. I became more confident. I worked on becoming more funny, more playful, more extroverted, because I'm naturally introverted. Like this would be the scariest thing ever for me back in the day. Um, I optimized my life situation. You know, I was like, okay, well, I need relationships with friends, girls, okay? I need to travel, I need to um, make money, I need to like really live a crazy life filled with these rich experiences. Let's optimize all of that. And I did. And I went all out and in 2010, I started traveling the world and teaching literally tens of thousands of people, just like you and me, face to face, how to get unstuck as well. How to transform. And I went all out. You know, I perfected my teachings and I would see every type of person. Okay, at this point, I've done five to six world tours and my schedule is every single week, I'm traveling to a new city or country every single fucking week and I'm seeing new people with new issues. I'm seeing the different subtleties. I'm seeing the setbacks. I'm seeing what's going on and I would perfect my teachings, perfect how to snap them out of it, how to help them not just settle for that shitty state of being but how to optimize it. Now one thing that I noticed over the years and this really troubled me and I'd see it in my clients but also in myself is that although we would transform ourselves, transform our lives and achieve success, it always felt like we were fighting against something to get there and any success that we would get, it would require a lot of effort to maintain. You know, it just felt like something kept pulling us back, like we weren't meant to get the success, like the system was rigged against us. And let me ask you this, right now, if you've optimized different things in your life, does it feel like that? Does it feel like you're fighting against something? Like the system is somehow just rigged against you. And you can try to find a way there. You can really perfect the techniques, perfect the willpower, and hustle your way there, but there's still that force field just kind of pulling you back, pulling you back to ground zero, pulling you right back into misery. And that's what I felt. And not just that, if you wanna go really deep here, but underneath, all of that success, all of the things I'd optimized, my personality, my life, I still felt the same. And this is how crazy this gets. And I'm sure you can relate right now, okay, where you might have optimized a lot in your life. You might have worked on yourself, your personality. You might have worked on your financial success, gone a new job, gone a promotion, gone healthy, improved yourself, read a lot of books, so on and so forth. Just really optimize everything, trying to live a really rich, fulfilling life. However, underneath all that, underneath all that surface work, all that surface transformation, did anything really change? Or is it still that same old you? And this is something that would freak me the fuck out, where I'd have all this success, and I'd fight to maintain it, a lot of effort, and then every once in a while, I'd have a glimpse of that old me. If I just sat with myself and I did nothing, and just brought that awareness into my body, it was still the same old me. It was still that three out of 10 underneath it all. And uh, it would freak me out to the point where I just kind of block it off. Like, oh, just don't pay attention to that. Because what that would mean is that everything that I had done, everything that I'd worked on and optimized was simply surface level work. It was just this big, you know, endless chase of shit that just didn't do anything. You know, it's mental masturbation if you think about it. You're just like, I'm doing all the success, chasing this, yet nothing is changing deep down inside. It's not true transformation. And this is what I realized in 2014 when I went through the most traumatic yet life-changing experience, which was the media scandal that I talk about a lot where I pushed my marketing so far and eventually things popped and guess what? I did get pulled back. I see some comments from various people here about a fella called Julian Blanc. Julian Blanc. Julian no, Blanc. Julian Blanc. Julian Blanc. Julian Blanc. Julian Blanc. Julian Blanc. Yes. Blanc. And although 
That was the worst experience of my life. It was also from this experience of just losing everything, because I lost everything, that as cliche as it sounds, I gained everything. Okay, because it forced me to stop distracting myself and just focusing on all this surface stuff, on all the external, on chasing more and more and more. And it forced me to let go of all that and even let go of the stuff that's keeping me of that three out of 10 and finally snap out and achieve that 10 out of 10. So let me explain, okay? This is how it works. Most people are stuck at the bottom, okay? They're stuck in a very shitty, miserable state of being. And that used to be me. You find out about personal development and you start optimizing yourself, you start optimizing your life. However, you're still optimizing trying to escape that shitty experience. Okay, so follow me here. At the bottom, everyone's experiences scarcity, they're coping, it's a bad state of being. They try to optimize it by running away from that. But by running away from it, they're keeping it alive. Because any movement where you're running away from something is the continuation of that thing. By you trying to be more confident, you're keeping the fact that you're not confident to begin with alive. By you trying to be happy, you're keeping the fact that you're not happy alive. By me, for example, trying to improve my three out of 10 baseline, I'm keeping that three out of 10 baseline alive. So it's literally like that fucking movie, The Matrix, where you can either be in The Matrix and just suck. You're at the bottom, there's your life, that's you, suck it. Or you can try to improve your life, but you're still in the fucking Matrix. And that's why no one achieves true, deep, permanent transformation. Because it's just this surface work in the matrix paradigm. And what I got out of going through that media scandal is that it snapped me out of the matrix. I had to literally drop everything and have this glimpse of another reality, another state of being, another paradigm, not based on scarcity, but based on abundance. And that is the most life-changing moment ever. And this is what inspired Transformation Mastery. This is what got me obsessed ever since the end of 2014 up until now to create a program for you to experience that without the downside of going through a media scandal so you as well can snap out of the matrix. Loosen the fuck up, all out. Hey, like, what are you trying to do? This is about results. If you've been following my journey, what I've been teaching, I've always been about results. And this is the next level for you to fucking kill it and get more results. Because if you're coping, and follow me here, if let's just say one to 10, you're three out of 10. Instead of coming from a solid platform of 10 out of 10 and then thriving and killing it in life, you're coping with this three out of 10. Everything you're doing is trying to compensate or escape it. A lot of energy, a lot of ah, paranoia, a lot of like waste is just going into this shitty state. I'm just trying to survive with it. And not only that, but guess what? You're addicted to this state. And this is what kept pulling me back and what kept pulling all of my clients back. So when you change this, okay, to 10 out of 10, that's your platform. You're no longer in scarcity, you're in abundance. You can thrive and just kill it even more and you cannot imagine the possibilities. As soon as I started incorporating this into my teachings for the past two years, the results have been so fucking drastic and so effortless. It's like they've been driving with the brakes on and those brakes are finally off and you're just free. I mean, imagine that, just walking out of your house right now, walking out of the front door and just being free not defensive, not coping, not worrying, not trying to escape it, not trying to numb it, not trying to stuff it down, just feeling fucking awesome and ready to attack life. Just fucking imagine. Loud as you can. I start, I just scream. Or what is it? Like, I scream as loud as Don't I can. Don't think, do. Ah! 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 Even more. Ah! Now talk, bring it. Just don't think, do. I fucking play League of Legends. Louder. Dude, 
That was. That was it. I, I honestly couldn't have thought of a better example. It's like, oh, my passion, League of Legends. When I play Dota, like, that's what turns you on. Yes. And now it's like that aliveness. Like, actually look at the crowd. That aliveness, the brightness in the pupils, the smile, the genuine smile. That's what you got to connect with. If you look at me ever since the end of 2014, for the past two years, versus the first eight years, 2006 to 2014, when I first got into this, those first eight years, I went all out. I became obsessed with transformation, but it's all about results here. Okay, that's how you measure this. Look at me the past two years. The change in terms of real world, real life results, these past two years, trump the first eight by a long shot. Like you can't even fucking compare. Those first eight years in terms of results, yeah, they're pretty fucking drastic, but now these last two, they're a fucking joke. And this is what I want for you. I want you to get your fucking foot off that brake pedal, start fucking killing it, start enjoying your results, start resonating with success. You don't have to fight this uphill battle where you're being pulled back and instead you start being pulled towards your goals and you can finally feel fucking awesome and at peace inside. Okay, so it's starting with the deep work so you can then kill it with the surface work. Close your eyes and think back to one of those moments you put yourself out there and uh, you know someone just really shamed you for what you were feeling or shamed you for what you were thinking. You know, they told you it's not okay. Um, that part of you was rejected. Um, you know, you felt maybe embarrassed, you felt upset, maybe self-hate kicked in because you shouldn't be feeling that. You're like, what's wrong with me? Why am I feeling that? Why is that coming up? And just kind of replay the scenario and just replay like all those sensations. Like how did you feel if you were anxious, if you were angry, just kind of what came up and what do you feel in your body right now? Just kind of replaying it. Do you feel hurt, betrayed? upset, embarrassed, stupid, hating yourself, beating yourself up. Just tune into it and just let it come up. So what's in Transformation Mastery and how does this all work? And the first thing I want to stress here is that it is a very experiential approach, okay? This isn't a program where you go through it and you memorize every little bit of content, every little idea trying to transform that way there. Instead, you go through this program and you let the content change what's inside. And you will notice the deeper you go into this program, the more little subtleties you're gonna start experiencing inside. And I've broken down Transformation Mastery into three main parts. There's part one, which is awareness, part two, which is proof, and part three, which is permanence. And in part one, this is where we really focus on snapping you out of this socially conditioned, scarcity-based reality. We're going to examine different paradigms. We're going to examine and question assumptions you've never questioned before and assumptions you didn't even know you were making. We're going to examine cause and effect. And here, I really want to reprogram your brain, reprogram your understanding of yourself and the world. And just by this first section, and this is how crazy it gets, you're gonna have epiphany after epiphany just exploding in your head and the changes will already start happening. And this is content and ideas you've never heard before. Um, they can be hard to swallow, but you gotta choose here. Do you wanna stay in this shitty reality? Is it the blue pill or the fucking red pill? Which one are you gonna take? Take it, swallow it, and then let's fucking do this. That's the first section. The second section is proof. And this is where I get you to experience everything that we talked about. You experience it firsthand through a guided release. And this is something that's completely new. I've never released anything like it before where you're going to sit down and it's a guided form of meditation that will get you to snap out of this reality, get you to snap out of the matrix. That's how crazy this gets. And just by this guided release, you will have that proof inside of you. You will finally have that glimpse, just like me, going through a worldwide media scandal, but you will have it from the comfort of your own home. And the third section is permanence, and that's where we go deep into your subconscious, which is another topic most people don't tackle, and this is where a lot of these assumptions and a lot of the things that are keeping 
this scarcity-based reality that are keeping you at this shitty default state that's keeping that alive are buried in there and you need to let go of those and release them. That's how you make this permanent. So awareness, you get what's happening. Proof, you have that glimpse. Permanence, we dive into your subconscious, we dive into your childhood, different traumas, different recurring patterns in your life. We break those patterns so you're no longer a prisoner, you're no longer living in reaction and we completely free you and make this new reality, this new paradigm permanent. And I didn't just stop here. I've also added two extra guided releases where there's a morning release and an evening release. And these are releases that I personally listen to every single day. It's the first thing I do when I wake up. I put on the headphones, I listen to this release. I go to bed, I put the headphones on, I listen to this release. Just doing that, just the two guided releases, your life will drastically change. And the fifth section here is transformational in-field footage. I was usually in school um, not remembering what to say, um, getting back bad grades or uh, yeah. criticism or um, in groups, social groups, gatherings, um, just people not liking me, I think. Um. So as you can see here, there's a lot more intense sensations that are surfacing. You know, she's getting a lot more emotional and that's because we're going deeper and deeper into the fear. And this is where it gets really crazy because what you're going to see in this section is all of these ideas and concepts illustrated with real life examples with people just like you and me in action and you're going to see me break it all down. So it'll give you a lot more context and help you apply it to yourself. Where if, for example, we talk about resistance, you can hear me break down resistance and I will say, it's going to show up in this way here, in this way here, in this way here, in this way here. You're going to resist snapping out of the matrix and you can understand it and you'll know how to go through it. But if you see someone else experience that resistance and you see me break it down and show you how it pops up and how subtle it is and how I help that person still blast through and finally let go and snap out of it, now you know what to fucking do. Now you have no excuse. Not only that, but now you're inspired because you feel what they're feeling in these videos. This is where it gets really tough. It's like that thing you keep running away from, that's the shit you got to dive into. He just said this, he, he didn't want anything serious and he was probably just uh, feeling like pushed into a corner and, had, and stressed out and under pressure. Mm -hmm. And how did you feel after he left and after he said that? not worthy of being in a relationship, of give, getting love, or um, um, yeah, having people tell you that you're great, or that you're worth of receiving love. So going deeper here, it's not feeling worthy of being loved. I fear not pleasing him. You can stay there and focus on that, but that's still surface. Go deeper. I fear losing him. I fear not being worthy of being loved. And I've also added a private Facebook group where you can network with other people going through this process, share your experiences, and really accelerate your transformation. Now, if you're really, really serious about transforming here, I've also created the Transformation Series. And this is a six months curriculum where every month we're going to tackle a theme. And we're gonna start with apathy and self-hate. And we're going to move up all the way to self-love and self-acceptance. It goes apathy, self-hate, month one. Guilt, self-sabotage, month two. Fear and self-trust, month three. Purpose and procrastination, month four. Approval and validation, month five and self-love and self-acceptance month six. And with each month, you're going to get one content video, one transformational infield video, one Q&A webinar where you can ask me any questions based on the theme of that month. And at the end of that webinar, you're also going to get a guided release done live based on your questions and based on the theme. So every month, we're going to have this guided release based on the theme, for example, fear, self-trust, you know, self-love, self-hate, purpose, procrastination. Those are huge. How to stop procrastinating. You'll have the content, you'll have the infield footage, the Q&A webinar, 
and the live release. This is the transformation series. This is if you're really serious about this. And I've also created the exclusive book club series where for three months, every month, we're going to tackle three of the most impactful books I've ever read. These are the top three books that just really hit me at a deep level. And we're going to have a webinar about the book where I'm going to be sharing my thoughts and how it impacted me and how it even impacted transformation mastery. And then we're going to go back and forth and I'm going to answer your questions on those books. So this is transformation mastery. This is how it all works. And this is what will completely change your life. Just like it did for me at every single level. Okay. And, uh, again, this is my masterpiece. This is it. Like this is, you know, not to get too morbid, but if I died right now, this would be the thing I'd leave behind. This is my mark on the world. Um, I mean, yeah, like I, this is it, you know? So if you resonate with this, if you want to transform, if you want to snap out of the matrix, if you're just sick of having that shitty experience of yourself underneath it all, no matter what you get, no matter how much success you get, did anything change? You know, for me, before that scandal, by the way, I had everything I thought would make me fulfilled, happy. I thought I had everything that would change that baseline. I was traveling, I had the girls, I had the fame, I had the money, everything. Yet, nothing changed and it just freaked me out. This is what finally produced that. Change your baseline. Kill the self-sabotage. Stop being pulled back. Stop making things harder than they need be. Make things easier on yourself so you're fulfilled, you're happy, you're coming from a good place and you can just fucking kill it. That's transformation mastery. If you want that, you want to snap out, you want to see something that, being straight honest here, 99% of people will never see. You want to see the other side, you want to see what's beyond the matrix, beyond scarcity, beyond this. I mean, really ask yourself, is this really life? Like, is this all that life is? Because if so, I mean, what the fuck? That was a question I'd also ask myself. Even growing up, I'm like, is this life? Like, I always felt something was a little bit wrong with me. Like, I'm like, why do I feel so shit? Like, is this life? Is this like why I'm here? And I'd look around and everyone else was just as miserable as me. If you go out in the street, when's the last time you saw someone who's just bright and just thriving and alive? There's that light in the fucking pupils. My dad is never, <laughs> like never. Is that life? Is that what life should be? Is that the life you want for you? And if the answer is no, if enough's enough, scroll down, click the link, and I'll see you in Transformation Mastery. Join the tribe, join the movement, and let's wake up.